How's it going guys and welcome back. Today we are doing a straightforward review of the Gerber Straight Lace. Now if you guys like competent reviews of EDC items, knives and gear, so on and so forth, be sure to click the link down below and go check out Gear Towards Gear, a channel that my buddy Sean runs. He actually provided this uh, knife for review. He has his own opinion on it and uh, yeah, if you want to save yourself from this hot mess, just go jump on over there and uh, go give Sean a follow, a like and subscribe, thumbs up, all the things for that guy. Um, he's just an overall uh, good member of the community. So big shout out and big thank you to him. I'm going to link all his stuff down below. But if you are still here and you want to check this out, we're going to do what we always do. Um, we're going to go over the pros of the knife, the things it's doing well, the so-sos, the little nitpicks and talking points, and then the oh-nos, the things that are going to cause us to stop, um, pause, and maybe take a step back from the knife. But as always, we're going to throw in a spec check to get things started. So let's kick this thing off and get going. Here's your spec check, guys. All right, now that we've got the spec check out of the way, I do want to drop in a size comparison snapshot just to give you an idea how big this knife is going to be. Uh, this is going to be pretty close to the pair of three, actually. So kind of just checking off one thing on the pros list. Uh, this knife is a slip joint. It is uh, under a three inch blade. So if you live in an area with, uh, if you're subject to tight knife restrictions or knife laws, this is going to be very friendly in those type of situations. So if you like a bigger slip joint style knife, something that's going to be a little bit different than your traditional knife, uh, this might do it for you. And, uh, and I think they did a really good job kind of incorporating a bigger slip joint style knife with a nice design. And kind of just touching on the design, we'll, we'll list that as another pro. I think this is a good looking design. I, I like this blue and this accent and, you know, the mirror polishing is something we'll touch on later. But overall, a, a pretty good design. Nice blade shape. Uh, they do have another one that comes in like a green, like an army green. And that one looks good as well. So the overall design, I think they did a really good job. Gerber has some really good designs, but they're just really, in my opinion, underutilized with that typical subpar materials and, you know, fit and finish issues that Gerber tend to have. And we're going to kind of just brush that stuff aside. We're going to look at this nice knife objectively, hopefully for this whole review. So with the design aside, the size and the, the slip jointness of it, slip jointness, that's a thing now. One of the other things that I think that this knife is doing well is the ergonomics. Uh, in hand, it feels pretty good. I'm not going to lie, uh, I was kind of surprised by that. I have a small hand, but you can see there's a little bit of room right there if you have a bigger hand than mine. And then kind of also touching on the ergonomics, one of the things that they did is they hit these edges, they kind of angled them, you know, in the areas that they should be angled and rounded some stuff off, even up to the bolsters here. So in hand, this is a pretty pleasant experience. Uh, it does kind of have a little bit of a swell down here. So it just, it just fits and stays in the hand pretty nicely. Uh, this jimping does not a dang thing so we're going to just ignore that and pretend it's not there because as far as i'm concerned that jimping doesn't exist it's it's just not there so moving on there are a couple little details that i find kind of nice uh where they got this flush ish i'm going to call it flush ish hardware uh you know it's not that typical roundhead screw so little details like that all the way around are, are nice i like that a little attention to detail uh from what i can tell this is running on phosphor bronze washers i tried to take it apart and we'll touch on that a little bit later but from what I can see this way, uh, it is looking like Foster Brown's washers. Let's see if we can get it for you. And eh, maybe, maybe not. They're not very big, but they are there. So let's pull that back. Another little nice attention to detail was uh, the, the centering. They nailed the centering. This knife is centered pretty dang well. So I'll give them props on that. So a little bit of the fit and finish stuff um, is kind of running in nicely on this guy. And I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that. Now everything that I can gather is Sean didn't do much cutting with this knife and it still has a pretty good edge. So it came sharp from the factory which is always a nice plus when you get a knife out of the box and you ain't got to do nothing for it and it's going to start cutting stuff. Another thing I like about the knife is going to be the pull of it. You know, slip joint guys like their walk and talk and I'm not quite a slip joint guy but this has a nice pull on it. You know, on a like a 1 to 10 I'd say this is maybe a 5, 4.5, 5 and we'll let you listen to the knife sounds. 
So not bad. I, I really like that. It's a little bit softer than what some guys might like. If you like your GEC bullnose, that's very authoritative, clicky, snappy, kind of a hard pull. This isn't going to have that. But if you don't like that stuff and you find it kind of abrasive and you want your knives to be a little bit, a little bit more uh, pulled back, this is going to have that for you. Another thing is this knife is running under $30, so that's always nice. Uh, this fits in that budget arena. And, you know, this just kind of bigger size slip joint in an interesting, unique style. Um, I think that's a good place for this to be priced. It's going to be alluring enough to get people to try it out. And I think that is not a bad price uh, when all this is said and done. I don't, I don't think that's a terrible price for this. I think this one rounds in at uh, $27 or $28-ish. I'll pop it up if I find the correct price for you guys so you're a little more informed than, than I'll be. One of the other details that they paid attention to was they did uh, they did weight relieve the inside here. If you look inside the liners, if it'll focus. There you can see they did take a little bit out of there. So, you know, that's a nice little detail. They didn't have to do that. And an effort to get this to be a little more, uh, little more easy on the pocket, they did a good job on that. And another little touching point real quick before we go into the next category is um, this anodization they did on the aluminum it is pretty nice. I don't see any blemishes or imperfections floating around on here. And it seems to have held up pretty good for, you know, light, light use and carry. I've carried this um, quite a few times since I've had it. And I don't see anywhere anywhere. So I can appreciate that. Good, good finish on the handles. Uh, that's going to probably wrap up our pros of the knife. We're going to jump into some so-sos. All right, let's talk about some so-sos of this knife. The things that are kind of just nitpicks and little talking points that you guys might want to know about. Um, this thing is mirrored for days. It is shiny everywhere. The blade, the bolsters, the clip, the liners, um, your little plate here. It is so dang shiny. Uh, normally, that wouldn't be that big of a deal. But I know right out of the box, Sean had scuffing and scrapes on his bolsters, which is something you don't want to see when you're getting a brand new knife. I'm pretty sure some of this stuff is just like got that chrome plating on it, that cheap kind of Chinese chrome plating. So I suspect that over time, uh, if this knife is getting a lot of pocket use, there's going to be some some like chipping or something. And the reason I say that is because if you look inside, you can see the uh, tool marks on here and even the tool marks are shiny, which indicates to me that this is just kind of got that chrome dip on here. And even on the pocket clip here, if you can see that. Uh, it's just kind of rough on the edges, but even the rough edges are shiny. So to me, that just indicates that some of these parts are just going to be dipped or kind of just like plated, which means that they didn't go through and actually finish all this stuff off. So to me, that's kind of a, a possible deal breaker to some folks. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but some of you guys might not actually care. So just shiny for days, not the biggest fan of that. Now, I did like some of the details that they got on the fit and finish, the centering, the, the finish on the handles, but there are some other lackluster categories. Um, if I hold this up to the light, you know, this way, and I look through it, the light this way, uh, I can see some spacing and some gapping here. Looking at it uh, on the back, you know, your liner is this flush with your scale here, but your scale sticks up higher there. Your liner is higher than your bolster there, but even there. So there are going to be some little um, fit and finish issues. The screws aren't quite flush. I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. But overall, there's just some little things. If you're a perfectionist on fit and finish, this isn't exactly going to be knocking it out of the park. Uh, not any deal breakers. I'm, I'm okay with them personally. If this was my knife, I, I could live with it. But I think it's something that you guys should be aware of. Now, we did mention that this was sharp out of the box, but the grind is a little... I'm going to just call it a hair wonky. All right, we're going to work on it this way. You can see there's a little bit of that beard there by the choil, and then it kind of goes up and then down and gets a little wavy right there. But... It is something to note if you're a, if you're a purist on your nice even grinds that might trigger some of your guys's little uh, OCDs on those type of things. So the grind is I'm going to call it a hair wonky. I've I've seen worse on on some higher end knives, but this one does have a little bit of it going on. All right, now let's take a hit at the pocket clip, shall we? Uh, this pocket clip is completely out of focus. Can we get it? There we go. Uh, this pocket clip is under a lot of tension. Kershaw clips used, are, tend to be ones that I don't really like because of how much tension there is on it. But good God, this thing is committed to staying in your pocket. I'm gonna show you um, a little clip of it going in and out of the pocket. It rides okay for not being a deep carry, you know, a pocket knife or a deep carry clip, but goodness, getting that in and out of the pocket, it's, it's pretty tight. And if you have anything that's, you know, less sturdy than a double pleated jean pocket, like if you have pajama pants on or some, some other slacks, this is going to be ripping you up. So not a big fan of the pocket clip. Now, Sean mentioned he didn't like how um, it is reversible. So, hey, let's let's go back in time and pretend we're in the pros. Uh, this is a reversible pocket clip. So that that's a good win. But, you know, and, and you can pull that plate out. I like the fact that they left this plate in here. 
Um, Sean mentioned he didn't like it. I would prefer there not just to be some kind of gap or hole there, and I like the idea that I can kind of put something in, and it matches the rest of the style of the knife. You have the mirror-coated, shiny, super blingy stuff up here and on the blade. So that it kind of ties in. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock it on that. I actually like the little plates that go in the in the empty spots. But man, that pocket clip, eh, it's not doing it for me. Um, not a big fan of it. One more so so to touch on, and I, and I feel like this is gonna be the biggest sticking point for a lot of people is the blade steel is gonna be 7CR13 MOV, which is immediately gonna elicit an eye roll from most of the community. Um, not very often you'll hear someone saying, "Can I at least get 8CR13 MOV?" But they, they've gone and done that with this knife. So that's going to be probably the biggest sticking point most people have with this. And I'm not going to go too crazy into it, but 7CR for backup slip joint type style knife, under 30 bucks. Okay, at least it's not 5CR 13 MOV, which still exists for some reason. But yeah, there you go. There's one more so-so. So those are going to be some of the so-sos about the knife. What about the O-Nos? Okay, for the O-Nos, I got one. Just one, which isn't terrible for a, for a Gerber, I suppose. The Oh No is going to be this little accent piece right here. I like the looks of it. I like this red and white and blue, even with the red, white, and the green. Looks good. The problem is, it is a piece of plastic that moves and wiggles. Um, and it's not like G10, like this you know hard synthetic stuff. This just feels like run-of-the-mill um, injected, injected cheap plastic. Now... It moves, so that's one thing, but upon further investigation, looking in the knife, you can see it's almost just like popped in there. And I, I, I fear that over time that this might pop out, or if you know it's put under a lot of stress that you could lose this piece. And once you lose that piece, I mean, it's kind of a, I don't really want a knife with parts missing, even if it ju is just a little accent piece, because then you're gonna have this weird gap here, and I don't think that's gonna look good. So I fear that over time you could potentially lose break or pop out this uh, plastic piece. It looks good, uh, but yeah. Oh, I lied. I'm a, I'm a dang liar. I got one more thing for the Onos, and that's going to be disassembly. Now, I tried to get um, a T6 in here, and it felt too small. It's like, huh, T7, that's weird, but okay, let's get a T7. And the T7 was too big, so I went back at it with the T6, and you could kind of turn it. Well, the screw would turn a little bit, and then it would skip, and so I was afraid of stripping all this out, so I, I just left it alone. Um, same thing with the pivot. I, I couldn't really get anything going as far as taking it apart because I did want to verify the, the washers and just take a look at how it works. But unfortunately, I was not able to get this apart. Now, you know, there are tricks and stuff to do it, but I'm going to be sending this off to uh, somebody else to review. Uh, my buddy Walt, uh, I'm going to link his channel down below. He does a lot of outdoor stuff, uh, mushroom hunting, knife reviews, just looking at gear and just nice, nice videos. So I'm going to send this off to him to review after me. So if you guys are interested in that kind of thing, um, also follow the links down below. So I didn't want to just wreck this knife and strip out hardware trying to get it apart for, for a 30 second clip in a video. So we've got a couple of oh no's, quite a few so-so's, and actually quite a few pros. I'm, I'm kind of impressed with the amount of pros that this knife has. So what do I think? Does, does Gerber get a pass for trying? Well, no, I'm still going to hold the things against them. Do I like it, love it, or leave it? Um, I like-ish. It. I know I've never really said that about a knife, but I, I do like it. Personally, I'm okay with everything that it's got going on. Um, I feel my the viewers and, and the purists and stuff are probably going to think that this would be a pass for them. But even with all the little quirks and stuff, having this uh, in the pocket, carrying it around, it is a nice looking knife. Um, I was pretty happy with it. This was something that actually worked its way into my EDC um, every, every few days. So, you know, part of that was trying to get to know the knife for review and stuff. But yeah, it's, it's an okay knife. You know, it doesn't have the thinnest grind behind the edge. Um, I didn't touch on that because I don't have calipers, but I'm actually going to be getting some because there's a few times I've kicked myself for not being able to give you guys, guys those measurements. But it is an okay knife. Uh, at the end of the day, this is actually an okay knife, and I do kind of like it. I think some of you guys might like it less than I do. Some of you guys might like it more than I do. Uh, you know, the $30 budget arena is, is pretty competitive. Getting below that, it gets a little less competitive because I feel like that's where you kind of run in some of the other garbage knives that pose as good knives. But it's still a competitive arena. I don't know if this is going to be your best buy at that price point, but I certainly don't think it's the worst buy at that price point. So if this appeals to you, I would say give it a shot. You know, if you buy it from a, a reputable dealer, maybe if you don't like it, you can send it back if it has some issues. But this is an okay example. Not bad, guys. So there it is. There is the Gerber Straight Lace. What do you guys think? Do you have any questions or comments? If you do, let me know down below. 
Um, follow the links. Check out some of these guys. Pretty cool people. Um, as always, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Have a good one. We will see you next time. Later, guys. How long is he going to do that for?